Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Agahi with your host, Warisa Zaina. We often hear about this term, hypnosis or hypnotherapy, but how many of us actually know what it's all about and how it can help us in getting to know more about ourselves, especially what goes on in our unconscious and subconscious mind and how it can help us in improving things or making positive changes within ourselves and our lives. To discuss it more and getting to, to get to understand what hypnosis is all about, how hypnotherapy can have a therapeutic effect on our mind and body. Today, we have a really, really special guest, and I'm really excited to welcome Luca Gatti, who's joining us from Brighton, who is a hypnotherapist, a mindset coach, and a styling consultant. Luca, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I know your schedule is quite busy and you, there's there's a lot going on behind the scenes with your coaching, but um, I'm sure our viewers are going to find this um, episode really, really beneficial. So I hope so, what is that? Thank you. Thank you. So Luca, tell me what inspired you to become a hypnotherapist today? Um, okay, that's a good question. Um, it's a very personal reason. So a few years ago, um, I became ill. Right. And I kind of lost myself. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, uh, a therapist, an occupational therapist actually inspired me to get better and take control of my life again and my health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, I heard about hy hypnotherapy. Yeah. Um, and I thought, maybe that works. Maybe that will work for me as well. And uh, so I started by doing some, you know, some uh, self-hypnosis uh, guided yeah. online. Mm -hmm. um, and I really liked it. And then I, I said, you know what? I actually want to learn to do this and help other people now. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it sounds like you have experienced life in a way that has really um, opened up things for you and you are where you are today because of the experiences you've had how did you start your journey as a mindset coach and why mindset coach well mindset coach is because it's really a made-up name like a lot of the the titles there uh, they are out there in the business world they're all made up names yeah. and i thought mindset coach sounds really good it is what i do um you you change your mindset and adjust your life through your mind, mindset. Yeah. And it's all about that. If you change and shift mm. your mindset, mm. then your perspective changes completely and you can really adapt and customize your life to the way you want it. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. And I think everything is about your mindset, about how you perceive things, what's your attitude like towards life, towards yourself. And, um, I think it's a brilliant combination, Luca, uh, to be a mindset coach and a hypnotherapist and also having this creative side where you can help people to, you know, become the best version of themselves. Um, so tell us about hypnosis first. Uh, most of us um, have heard this term, but we are not really sure what it's all about because some people confuse it with being like in a trance-like state, which is not the case? Well, there is a trance state component, but the thing is there is so much confusion about uh, hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Uh, some people think it's almost like magic. Some people think it's something that you do just on stage, but it's almost like a role play. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are so many misconceptions out there. Yeah. Uh, hypnosis is... Um, it's just a name. It's just a label mm. for uh, a state that we enter every day, naturally, anyway. Um, do you know when, for example, you just wake up, the alarm goes off mm. and you wake up, turn it off, but you're still half awake, half asleep yes. and you're in that state. That's an hypnotic state. Wow. That's a, almost like a, a trance state. Wow. Uh, do you know when you're so involved with a book or uh, watching a tv show 
mm. and you almost zone out and you enter in that, in, into that reality completely. Yes. Uh, that is also a trance-like state. Mm. So hypnosis is, uh, it's something very natural, something you enter uh, some kind of like hypnosis state or trance state when, when you pray as well, when you do mm. meditation. So uh, it's something magical where you just connect you to your body, you connect to yourself, you connect uh, to your higher self, uh, you connect to, to what you do, your work, your art, and, uh, and you just go with the flow and you shut off your critical mind for a second and you just enter reality where everything is uh, a lot more flexible and possible. This sounds more like um, a very relaxed state of mind when you are almost free of worries and concerns and you kind of just it is. present in the moment. It's just like that. But it is different from mindfulness where you're only focused on the present. But this is something else, right? This is where um, you are conscious, but at the same time in a different zone. If you could explain that. Yes, in a way. So um, I think there is a parallel between mindfulness and uh, meditation and uh, hypnotherapy. Uh, you just enter a state where you're just so focused, but at the same time, very relaxed. And obviously you focus on different things when you, when you do uh, mindfulness, uh, you focus uh, on the present, you focus on the way you feel in that moment, you focus on uh, keeping your thoughts out of the way. And if you have intrusive thoughts, that's fine. You just push them away gently and just focus again in, in your moment. Uh, in hypnosis, is a little bit different because obviously you, you're helped by a hypnotherapist. So basically what they do is, what we do is that uh, we create suggestions in so many different ways and they're always customized to the client. Um, and it's almost like listening to a story and you just listen and focus to the sound of the voice of the hypnotherapist mm. and you enter a different state where you just uh, pose your critical mind, your conscious mind, and uh, you just let um, the unconscious mind listen and absorb everything that the therapist says. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it works so much so, so well, because the, the non-critical mind, the subconscious mind, mm -hmm. um, is almost like a radio. You know, radios, always listen to the frequency around them even when they're off mm -hmm. it's the same thing so wow. it's almost like pressing that button and letting the subconscious mind absorb and taking over without the critical mind um, filtering things that we normally wouldn't let in mm. you mentioned earlier on that before you started this journey you practiced um, self-relaxation and self-hypnosis. Is there a difference between self-hypnosis and hypnosis that is carried out by a hypnotherapist in a session with the client? Well, I think there is always a difference. Mm -hmm. um, when you deal with, uh, when a, 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 a hypnotherapist uh, works with a client, Every single suggestion is um, is very curated, is designed for that client. Okay. So before any uh, hypnotherapy mm -hmm. uh, session, the hypnotherapist will have a discussion with the client okay. and uh, they will study uh, what to work on, what the goal is, um, but also the history about the client of the client and um and so all the suggestions are very very specific okay uh, to that client mm -hmm. when you do um self-hypnosis online uh on youtube videos and things like that it yeah. can still work but it's usually much more generic mm -hmm. 
and, and that's because it, it's supposed to work um, for more people without yeah. necessarily customizing that audio for yes. each one of them. Yes. So um, they can be effective. Actually, they are very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you work with another person that actually knows what kind of suggestion you may need, then it's actually much more effective. And uh, there is always some kind of like um, task that you have to uh, carry out uh, in to, throughout your days, uh, which will help the therapy and the change process. So uh, there is a lot that goes into an hypnotherapy session. Right. Uh, but yes, self-hypnosis is always very good. Mm -hmm. And do you think most people can do self-hypnosis or is it something that only applies to certain individuals? Well, the best way to do it is when your therapist teaches you mm -hmm. how to do it. Right. <clears throat> so uh, when the client is ready and the hypnotherapist knows that the client is ready, um, the hypnotherapist will teach the client how to enter that state how to exit that state and how to carry out the therapy part right. of the hypno hypnosis. Yeah. Um, you can learn that with videos online without uh, an hypnotherapist doing it with you. Um, but it might take a lot more practice to get there and figure out which, how, to, how to do it and which uh, way works for you or not. Right. When you're guided with a professional, uh, it's going to be a lot more precise and a lot quicker. Of course, of course. Um, you know, the perception or um, the understanding of the general public, you know, mm -hmm. who have absolutely no idea of hypnosis or hypnotherapy. Um, when they watch, like, for example, old films or TV shows, there's this stereotypical image that pops up that there is a man I'm in a suit with a pendulum and yes, and there's somebody sitting there just watching it and the next thing you're in a totally different world. But looking at modern hypnotherapy and for example, the ones that I have attended sessions, there is no pendulum. It's just the hypnotherapist speaking to you and you've got your eyes closed and your body is all relaxed. And the next thing you know, you're in this, in this state. Mm -hmm. so yeah if you could elaborate on that well what you're talking about is uh, first of all the misconception not misconception but um, how media portray uh, mm -hmm. hypnotherapy yeah. which is not that far off from reality but also is um, yeah, there's a lot of um, how can I say it it's fantasized a little bit. Mm, yeah. So, yes, you can use a pendulum. You don't need to. Mm. But if the client expects a pendulum because they've seen on TV and they think that's the only way to do it because it must be true. I've seen it on Facebook. It must be yeah. true. <laughs> I've seen on TV. It must be true. Um, usually you don't work against that belief. Uh, to avoid any resistance and you work with the client belief system. Uh, so yes, it's possible to hypnotize someone with a pendulum. Uh, however, it's not uh, necessary. I mean, you can literally just uh, use the same method by lo looking at any spot, anything be uh, above your, yeah. your eye line. Uh -huh. So when you look up, uh, your eyes get naturally tired. And that's why the pendulum uh, works because it makes your eyes tired and you enter that state a lot quicker. When you look up, you enter that uh, state of hypnosis a lot quicker. Uh, so yes, you can use that method, but you can use relaxation uh, method as well, where you relax parts of your body gradually uh, working through muscle from, from muscle to muscle muscle. Um, also you can use, uh, shock induction, mm. uh, confusion inductions. There are so many different ways. 
you can literally uh, pull someone's arm and then start a really quick induction tell, telling them to go deeper and deeper into hypnosis and that will work as well. Yeah. So you customize that uh, depending on what the, cast, the client belief system is. If they think it's going to be something very relaxing, mm -hmm. then you will do a, a muscle, muscle relaxation induction. If the client is a, is a very adventurous client and they, they think that it has to be something a little bit more impressive, then you can do obviously a confusion or shock induction or, or even a pendulum if they, if they like that. Interesting. It's um, interesting. I've seen some, some videos on sleep hypnosis where if you're finding it difficult to fall asleep and you're really exhausted and tired, but you just can't fall asleep. Mm. So you just listen to this guided meditation, as you may call it, or sleep hypnosis, and you just try to relax yourself. Mm. And I think most of us find that a bit difficult to do, keeping in perspective the type of lifestyles that we live, like it's on autopilot. You know, get up in the morning, get ready for work, do this, da 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 da. And the next thing, it's like, oh my gosh, it's it's time to go to bed. <laughs> How can you apply this? Say, for example, if you just want to take some time out for yourself, just to relax, just to unwind, just to get into that state. Well, I think that meditation, to begin with, is a fantastic tool. I think everyone should do some kind of meditation uh, throughout the day. Uh, even just five minutes before going to bed or, or when you wake up to just, you know, put yourself in the right mindset, in the right uh, state of mind to actually go through the day. Uh, but that can be, that, again, that is just a label, you know. Uh, you can pray instead and just prepare yourself for the day ahead or prepare uh, yourself for a peaceful night of sleep. You know, it, it's, um, it's just sim as simple as that. But obviously, if you want to do a, a, a hypnotherapy session to help you sleep, then you can do that uh, with a different technique. So I was actually discussing this topic with uh, my colleagues and my forum uh, and my teachers uh, last week. And, uh, and I thought, there are so many videos of sleep hypno hypnosis on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. And um, I was thinking, how does it work? Because someone has to be awake to be hypnotized. Because hypnosis is not sleep. If you fall asleep, you're not hypnotized. Because you entered a completely different state. Um, and yes, we realized that there is no evidence that sleep hypnosis actually work mm. but it does work in a different way um, it's almost like a bedtime story so what you do is just uh, you focus on a story you focus on someone's voice it's almost like a lullaby as well you focus on the rhythm of the voice of someone talking to you and uh, and then you relax and you go to sleep but actually that's that's the way it works it's just it's not real hypnosis it's just a, another label um there is a, a long time way. <laughs> yes <laughs> there is a fantastic way to actually uh help people fall asleep better um which is with post-hypnotic um post-hypnotic su suggestions so you do a, a a therapy session with uh with your hypnotherapist and uh, they will tell you something like, as soon as you touch your, bed, your pillow, mm. uh, you will fall asleep. Wow. And, and that will work. Obviously, it's a lot more elaborate than that. Of course, yeah. There's a lot of more repetition that goes on into it. Um, but that's, that's the principle. So you're awake. You're into an hypnosis um, uh, state. Mm. And the hypnotist will give you suggestion to fall asleep at a certain time when something happens there there has to be a trigger yeah. and a, a really good trigger is the pillow mm. for example yeah or when you go to bed or when you switch your light off uh next to your bed 
Um, so all these uh, things can can really work. Mm. Um, but yes, that that is the way it works. So you can just listen to any story or any lullaby or, or someone doing a full on uh, sleep hypnosis. It doesn't matter as long as it relaxes you, you can fall asleep. So that's the central idea of being in a relaxed state just before going to bed so you can have a relaxed sleep. Um, and I think this is why it's advisable that just before bedtime, avoid looking at screens, avoid looking at your mobile phone, avoid arguments and conflict because that's not going to help you attain that level of um, calmness and ease that would promote sleep. And that's just Absolutely. one example. I'm sure you've got tons to give. Absolutely. Anything that triggers your mind and anything that uh, sparks your um, imagination uh, mm. in a way that it excites you too much uh, or arguments or, or you see things on Facebook that trigger a thought that you might not want before going to sleep because yes. it might be an upsetting thought mm. or it might be something a little bit too heavy before night at night time. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, the best thing is to just uh, set a time where you say okay from now on I'm not going to touch any screen and I'm just going to unwind and I'm just going to avoid any argument mm. and just prepare myself to go into a peaceful night of sleep. Yeah. Luca what about pain and I'm not just referring to physical pain although that's something I'm curious to know because um I've read a few studies on, on people who um, underwent a surgery or a procedure and they opted not to take anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And they were under a hypnotic, um, you know, trance, as you would like to call it. And they did not feel the pain. And I was, I was really amazed that this is so powerful. I don't think we, we appreciate what hypnosis can do to your mind and your body but how does that work well it works in the same way um as all hypnosis works suggestions wow. and uh you know something that people don't understand and they, it's not that they don't understand that is that we're not thought you know we're not taught to to think that way uh is that you can actually be in control of your mind, your body, what you feel, your perception of things. Uh, and that works just the same way with pain. Uh, pain is a physiological response. It's, a, it's an alarm bell uh, that says something is going on. Something is not right. Something is hurting you. And this alarm bell prevents you from being hurt even further. Mm. And that, have, uh, that is the same for mental, mental pain, uh, physical pain. Uh, uh, it's just a, a little alarm bell. It's almost like a fever um, that uh, prevents you from getting even sicker. Yeah. Uh, your body temperature raised to, to kill everything that is going wrong with your body at that moment. Uh, pain is the same thing. It's just uh, an alarm bell. Mm. And you can actually, like you said, uh, do amazing things mm. with hypnosis. You can manage to turn that bell off uh, for a set amount of time. Uh, you can actually uh, go into uh, anesthesia mm. uh, in hypnosis and uh, have dental surgery operations uh, it, it depends on the person, really, because we are all suggest, su suggestible to a certain level. Uh, and some people uh, that are really good at uh, doing hypnosis um, and receiving hypnosis uh, and can focus enough wow. to reach that very, very, very deep state of hypnosis uh, and shut off that pain uh, alarm mm. they can actually do that wow. uh, and i know people that have done it and uh, i i think it's amazing it, it sounds truly amazing what about psychological pain what about <clears throat> sorry 
you know, unpleasant memories from, from the past, from childhood, or people who have survived some really negative, you know, experiences. Mm -hmm. um, people who, like you even mentioned just now, um, if somebody has been through something traumatic, and I've seen and I've heard that hypnotherapy is quite helpful in, in getting over that trauma or yes. coming out of that traumatic state, you know? Um, and I'm just like fascinated by how does that work? Well, I think one of the principles, uh, hypnosis and, and NLP mm. uh, are very interconnected. Uh, a lot of the principles are the same. A lot of the techniques are the same. Um, and one of the principles of NLP is that we all have all the resources that we need to go through life, yeah. right? Um, that's a presupposition of NLP. Um, and that is so true. Mm. And what you do with NLP, but also uh, you can do that with hypnosis very well. I mean, that's what you do with hypnosis is um, you find those resources that you need to, to overcome any challenge, uh, any trauma. Um, a lot of people think, oh, I'll go to a hypnotherapist so they can make me forget. Um, if you go to uh, someone that practices ethically, they will never do that. You cannot make someone forget something yeah. because you're not meant to, you know, everything that you go through life um, is meant to teach you something. Definitely. And uh, it might be painful and you can work on that pain. So you can work on your resistant, resistance to the mental uh, pain uh, that a certain situation or a memory or trauma can 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 bring yeah. you yeah. um but it's never advised to remove the experience altogether um so what you do is you is that you, you alter uh your resources and your um uh level of um can you can you explain what you, what you mean by resources so that um, our viewers know exactly what you refer to when you say resources? Absolutely, resources can be anything um, within or even out. But even better, it's when it's within because without you know it can be uh, you have a very supportive family or a very supportive friend and they can help you go through that and that's a resource because uh, it's it's something that can help you. Uh, you can it's something you can use to get over uh, a challenge or a difficult time in your life. Yeah. Uh, but the resources within us are the most important because it means that you do not actually need anybody and you can overcome any challenge by yourself um, yeah. using what you already have. Mm -hmm. And that can, could be, uh, some people can be um, very good at expressing themselves. Some people can be uh, very good at um, distracting themselves. Some people mm -hmm. can be very good at um, at changing the the at reframing uh, an experience. Uh, <clears throat> but it can be so many. It can literally can be anything that is useful in that mm -hmm. moment. And in that experience, they can help you go through it. And even better, if you can manage to look back at it mm. and say, actually, there is a big learning that I can use in this, in this time. You yes. know, that, that experience can teach me a lot. Uh, these are all resources. Mm. So it's difficult to pinpoint one single one because we have, uh, so, an indefinite uh, amount of resources and it's everything that it's useful in that time and moment mm. for you and also sometimes i mean i'm sure you have experienced this too luca sometimes you don't get like a complete understanding of something that happened there and then mm. sometimes it can even take months or years 
to reflect back on that specific or certain event or incident that took place and you reach that understanding that, okay, this is why it happened and this is what happened during the time and how it has changed me as a person as a result. Maybe back then I didn't understand. Back then I couldn't comprehend. But now that I reflect on it, um, it has given a totally different new meaning to, mm -hmm. to that experience. Yes. Um, that's, a very thing, that, that's a very important thing to do in every, um, everything we go through life. Yeah. Uh, every experience is meant to teach us something. And, uh, and we can use mm. that learning as a resource for something else. Yes. Um, and you can do that. Sometimes it's difficult to get the learning. Yeah. Sometimes it's difficult to, to understand what to do in a certain situation. Because like you said, a lot of times you, <clears throat> you go through something and in that very moment, you don't really understand what it is that you're meant to do. Yeah. what is that you're meant to learn from it yeah. uh, sometimes you don't even understand what is going on yes. and that's completely fine yeah. you know um but there are techniques in hypnosis that um can give you that little insight that you're looking for um there are so many analytical um approaches that you can use to do that and some of them are really really interesting um <clears throat> like automatic writing mm -hmm. uh, where you just go into a, a, a hypnosis state and um, <clears throat> you start drawing or, or writing um, and you don't really know consciously mm. what you're doing uh, and then at the end of the session you just look at what you've been writing or drawing and uh, you try to get um, some kind of understanding from it sometimes it's something very literal Mm. Uh, and uh, you start writing things in a very direct way, telling you exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and other times you just have to interpret a little bit. Um, but yes, and I, I love analytical approaches because they are so surprising. Um, and sometimes you can get the answer you're looking for uh, at night during a dream. Uh, sometimes you know uh, a few days later you get the answer you're looking for when it's uh, when you work with analytical approaches it's never um, straightforward well, it can be but it's not expected usually um, because your subconscious mind work on a different um, time frame so you mentioned you dreams and yes. you know that it also originates from your subconscious or unconscious um, state of mind. How can people, um, and I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned this, that there's this misconception that hypnosis or hypnotherapy is to delete something from your mind, like, uh, you know, er er erase certain memories, which is not the case. And I think this is extremely important to understand, especially when you're healing from something, that the first step to healing is to acknowledge and accept whatever has happened. Denial is never going to help. Avoidance is not going to help. Absolutely. So how does hypnotherapy help in connecting with your subconscious or your unconscious state of mind? How do you kind of rediscover yourself? Well, that is a different path for everybody. It's a different process for everybody. Some people are very uh, quick mm. working in hypnosis. Some people need more time. And you always work with the client's um, time. You know, you don't, you don't say as a hypnotherapist, you're going to need five sessions to do this. Um, some do, um, but it's not really, um, it's not always the way it works mm. because we are all similar, but different. Um, and, uh, especially when you work with the subconscious mind, 
some people can really take the time uh, to go through something and some others <clears throat> might be a lot quicker than you expect. Uh, yeah. But um, yes, there are so many different techniques that, uh, and tools uh, that a therapist can use for that. Mm. What other examples can you share with us um, that will help us in understanding the benefits of hypnotherapy? Because there are so many different types of therapies out there. So, so how, many. Yeah. How do we know? Like, for example, you know, people suffering from post traumatic stress or depression or um, anxiety, cognitive behavior therapy is said to be quite effective. So, what is hypnotherapy effective for? You name it. <laughs> <Wow>. uh, <laughs> that so... answers everything. <laughs> So, so many, uh, so some of the very common ones are uh, uh, a lot of clients use it for uh, helping with stress and anxiety. It, it's one of the most common uh, uses, mm. uh, is hypnosis, for hypnosis. Um, but you can, you can really uh, help clients uh, that uh, want to find a different path in life and uh, find a different um, uh, work career, uh, reorient themselves uh, in any way. Uh, a lot of people can need help uh, going past a trauma, yeah. uh, whether it's recent or something very, very old, uh, ex like an old experience. Uh, you can use so many techniques for that. Uh, uh, PTSD you mentioned uh, you can also uh, use hypno hypno hypnotherapy for that uh, smoking cessation uh, weight loss um, or weight management um, you can use it you can even use it for more practical things sometimes mm -hmm. like um, uh, if you're an actor and you need to learn how to cry uh, on command um, you can use hypnosis for that or you can use if you're a writer and you get stuck mm. uh, and you you got one of those uh, blocks where you can't write or you're an artist and you can't paint or whatever wow. uh, you can use a lot of uh, different uh, uh, approaches for that as well mm. uh, like the analytical ones yes. and it will help you really unblock and and um, find a, a new uh, flow of artistic flow uh, and energy uh, yeah. you can use it for healing you can use it uh, that's a more holistic uh, side of it when you say healing luca mm -hmm. is this physiological healing that you're referring to or psychological or emotional or spiritual mm -hmm. all of it wow um all of it. Uh, you can really guide uh, someone spiritually if they are, if they find challenges uh, in the life and uh, spiritual life and, and the terrestrial life, if you if you will. Um, maybe not with religion as such, yeah. unless uh, you know you work with someone who's qualified uh, as a spiritual. Or, or religious leader right but uh you can really uh heal um psycho psychologically physiologically you can actually alter some physiological uh functions in your body uh a lot of people um <clears throat> might need help with uh well anxiety is uh, just a chain of physiological reactions really yeah. uh, so you can help with that um, you can help with um, erectile dysfunction you know a lot of people actually use it for that um, you can use it even for uh, excessive uh, perspiration you know you can all all these are of... physiological response but it's all yeah any yeah. physiological response you can actually alter it uh, once I remember I was having a panic attack mm. and I said I thought I was going to die yeah. 
Yeah. And then I snapped out of it. I said, Luca, you're not dying. This is a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Just go in front of the mirror. Just look at yourself yeah. and calm yourself down. And you just enter into a different state where you can literally calm yourself down, slow your heart rate, slow your breathing, uh, breathe in a different way, like a more diaphragmatic way. That's a fantastic way uh, to, to breathe. And uh, any hypnotherapist will teach you that. Um, you can really um, alter these physiologic, physiological uh, reactions and, uh, and moderate them in oh. a way that is more acceptable for you in that, in that moment. Obviously, you can't be always in control. Of course. Um, but you can uh, train yourself mm. to control uh, these physiological responses when it's needed. Yeah. yeah, it will help you in the long run. It's, it's all about practicing and... Yes using the power of your own mind to control exactly and even pain uh pain management for people yes. that are, um like me that has um ongoing pain like fibromyalgia mm -hmm. uh, you can really uh help people uh altering that level of pain they experience in that in that moment and that is fantastic for someone that lives in constant pain. Yes. Can you imagine? Yeah. You know, if you if you have a pain that is not really mechanical, I mean, that is another important thing. Yeah. If you have something wrong uh, with you, uh, we don't do miracles. You know, we am, I'm not going to cure you. Yeah. Uh, if if someone has cancer, they have to go to a GP. Of course. Um. But if someone has cancer and is going to their GP and their GP says hypnotherapy can help you with adjusting your level of pain mm -hmm. and maybe even increasing your, uh, your pain. pain. Yeah. Yes, um, that can really help. Mm -hmm. if there are people that uh, uh, cannot have anesthesia because anesthesia doesn't work for them or they might be... Um, allergic to certain chemicals yeah. um, you can use hypnotherapy to do a procedure mm. and uh, and you can also for very skilled people that can really um, that really have mastered hypnotherapy mm. uh, hypnosis uh, you can uh, stop the bleeding and excessive bleeding, control excessive bleeding, and uh, uh, speed up recovery uh, time, and minimize um, a risk of infection. Mm. That's how much you can do in hypnosis. Yeah, this this reminds me. Um, I've come across so many studies that indicate that there were people who were suffering from long term medical conditions or um, accidental injuries and. Um, it's the power of the mind, the suggestions that they made to themselves that not only increase the speed of recovery, but things that the health professionals kind of gave up on and said, you know, there's no hope for recovery or whatever. But they kind of, their, their minds um, programmed in, in such a way that it kind of reversed everything and started to mm. heal the cells in, within the body that were once not fully functioning or you know they were damaged as a result of the illness or injury so i don't think we fully understand the power of um, our mind our brain and how it shapes everything in our life so yeah thank you so much for that um, um luca what's the best way to to contact you if, if our viewers want to contact you they have questions or they would like to have a session with you um i am my name is luca mind coach on all social media uh without space luca mind coach mm -hmm. um and also lucamindcoach.com is my website uh you can get in touch there um you can find all my social media there. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on um, WhatsApp. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. 
uh, Twitter and Instagram. I know you're also on Hidai TV right now. So thank you, you so go. much, Luca. This this was, I mean, you know how much I was looking forward to this, this episode. And hypnosis is something I've always been kind of, um, you know, fascinated with. So thank you so much for taking the time out and this brilliant um, discussion that you had today. Um, any thank final so words? Thank you so much for having me. It's been a honor to uh, talk to you and uh, share a little bit of uh, my world and uh, what I like to do uh, with your viewers. And I hope that someone can learn something from it and uh, maybe open up to the possibilities of hypnosis. Definitely. Thank you so much. To all our viewers, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, don't forget to comment on our YouTube and Facebook page. You can also call in the studio to, if you want any further information or contact details for Luca. Meanwhile, look after your mental health. And next Saturday, we'll join you again with another topic and an amazing guest. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.